All right, today is day 26. Forgot to grab my sheet. Uh, it's a quick day today. I think you'll be pleased. Capitalization. Capitalize the first letter of the word in most lines of poetry. If the first line cannot fit on one line, indent the second line and then do not capitalize the first word of that line. So you can look at your example here, wherever it's a complete line, the um, first letter is capitalized. And then in that third line down, he called for his pipe and he called for his bowl because that one um, didn't all fit on one line. It's indented and then it doesn't need to be capitalized. So your capitalization section is in the poem entitled The Village Blacksmith, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow wrote, and then we go into the poem. So let's take a look at that. All of that needs to be looked at for punctuation. So the first word of the sentence would be capitalized, so the I and in. In the poem entitled, the T in the is capitalized because it's the first word of the title. V in village is capitalized. B in blacksmith is also capitalized. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, the first letter of each of his names will be capitalized. So let's just do that part first. Okay. In the poem entitled, <laughs> The Village Blacksmith, and then Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, those would all be capitalized. So you can see that. Then we have the next part. If you look up um, in the example, you can see that you would capitalize the first letter of every one of those lines because none of it is indented, all right? So it would look like that, under, the, the, and with, okay? Very good, that's your capitalization for today. Punctuation. Place a comma after two or more short introductory prepositional phrases or one long introductory prepositional phrase. Hopefully by now you're getting very familiar with prepositional phrases. We've had many days of finding them um, and crossing them out in the parts of speech section. You've had the lists of the prepositions that you've been working on. So now here's one more thing to pay attention to with prepositional phrases placement of a comma if there's two or more short ones or one long one at the beginning of a sentence. Their example, with the goal of success, comma, I began. There are two prepositional phrases there, with the goal and of success. You would put the comma after the second one, not between all of them, after the second one, or if there's three of them, after the third one. All right, so let's take a look at the sentence. At the end of the summer, Jenny will move to a small rural town. How many prepositional phrases are there? What are they? At the end is one prepositional phrase. Of the summer is another prepositional phrase. So you have two short introductory prepositional phrases put together. So you're gonna put a comma after the second one. So it would look like this, at the end of summer, comma, Jenny, and then we'll move to a small rural town, period, at the end of the sentence. All right, under sentence type, write an exclamatory sentence. An exclamatory sentence is one that would be showing great emotion, something that you're exclaiming about. Um, for example, we have no grammar this week. That would be an exclamatory sentence. Uh, the house is on fire would be an exclamatory sentence. So you get to impress me with your creative skills and come up with an exclamatory sentence on your own. Moving on, parts of speech. A type of noun, a collective noun, is a noun that refers to more than one, but it's still seen as a separate unit. For example, army, audience, and group. In the present tense, use a singular verb. And the example is, the audience applauds. You don't say the audience applaud, 
you say the audience applauds. So what they want you to do in the example is underline the subject, which in this case will be a collective noun. Underline that once and underline the correct verb twice. So a herd roam or roams on the open plain. What is the collective noun in that sentence that's acting as the subject? Again, a collective noun is a group of things that's treated as one. That would be the word herd, because that's like a group of cows, but you're talking about them as if they were one single unit. A herd roams would be the correct verb. So you would underline herd once and roams twice. Next, you have the sentence combining section. Only two sentences to combine today. Um, so hopefully that will go well for you. I look forward to reading them uh, when you hand them in. Thank you. God bless you.